Have you ever experienced a glitch in the Matrix? If so, I would love to feature it on my channel. Please go to AsTheRavenDreams.com slash submit or check the links down below. And of course, thank you. I feel like this is going to sound insane, but I've been thinking about this for two days now, and I feel like I have to post this to see if anyone possibly has an explanation. Two nights ago, me and my girlfriend are laying in bed with YouTube on the TV in the bedroom. I watch it while she sits on her phone or reads. I have the YouTube autoplay feature on, so when one video ends, it just immediately plays the next one. I was watching a ton of Nick Merck's videos that night. For those that don't know, Nick Merck's is a gaming streamer slash YouTuber. So, I ended up falling asleep while the videos are playing, and the TV is on lower than half volume because it's late, and was pretty much just background noise, honestly. I don't know how long exactly I was asleep, but it couldn't have been long because my girlfriend was still awake reading when this happened. But as I'm asleep, I hear clear as day an extremely loud Nick Merckx himself go, Wake up! in the most stern, bone-chilling tone. The only way that I've ever heard someone else say this like this is in Spider-Man Far From Home when Mysterio and Spider-Man are fighting, and Mysterio goes, It's time to wake up to him. And that's the only thing I can compare it to. I jerked awake and was facing the TV, and I swear to God, for a split second, I saw Nick Merck's face in full screen staring straight into the camera, and then it immediately went back into gameplay with him talking to his teammates, and stuff like nothing was happening. I looked over at my girlfriend, and she was staring at the TV with a shocked look on her face. I asked her, Did you hear that? And she said, Yeah, and sounded scared. I picked up the remote and rewound a full minute in the video, and we both sat and watching it through, and it did not happen in the video. He never once screams, wake up, nor does he go full face cam in the video. He only ever does full face cam in the intros, and he hasn't even been doing intros lately, so there's literally no full face cam at all in this video. I have no clue what happened. Could someone please explain this? Edit. First of all, thank you guys so much for the upvotes and the awards. I didn't expect this to blow up at all and was just looking for some advice. So, to see this many people interested by this, and to hear all your stories in the replies is crazy to me. Also, I appreciate all your jokes. <laughs> Having people be able to not only relate to this, but make jokes about it, is soothing, in a way. Also, I haven't been on Reddit all day, so I didn't even know that this blew up until just now, and there are so many comments, I can't really reply to them all, so I'm going to just try to answer a lot of the questions here. 1. Did I get confirmation the next day from the girlfriend, or just when I woke up? After this happened, I didn't fall asleep for a while. And we stayed up together freaked out for about an hour and a half talking about what had just happened. As well as the next night, we both said we should just keep the TV off when going to bed. So, yes, she definitely experienced it and it was confirmed a lot that night as well as the next day. Two, is it possible it was an ad? No. I have YouTube Red specifically because I watch YouTube on my TV every night, and the ads, especially mid-rolls, 
are extremely annoying, so I never get ads on YouTube. 3. Could someone have cast onto the TV with their phone, etc.? If it's possible to cast onto an Amazon Fire Stick, then... possibly? But I've now talked to everyone that lives in my house since this happened, about this experience, and all of them said they don't cast to TVs, ever. So, if it did happen, it would have had to have been a random person, like a neighbor. Although my neighbors are pretty far away as we live in a wooded area, where the houses are really spread out. I'm not saying it's 100% impossible, but given all the variables I've listed, and the fact that it was Nick Merckx himself yelling from the TV, I feel like the chances of this are just extremely slim. 4. Did my girlfriend see it? I have asked her if she saw it, and she said she didn't, but I feel like I need to emphasize some details here because I wrote this post very poorly before because I was on mobile, and like I said, I didn't think it would blow up at all, so I didn't put much effort into it. When I say it was loud when he yelled, I mean it was loud. As if my sound bar had gone up to max volume, and then immediately back down to below half volume. Also, no, it was not me who yelled it in my sleep. Me and my girlfriend have previously talked about this a lot, as I said previously, and she knows it was the TV. She knows what Nick Merckx sounds like, and she said when it happened, she instantly thought it was the TV as well, and there's no way that it was me. 5. Do I have any other weird stuff happen around my house? Not a lot, honestly. My sister watched her closet doorknob twist back and forth once, and when she finally opened the door, there was nobody there. I feel like sometimes I hear someone whisper in my ear, but I never really care because I feel like everyone has stories about, I swear someone just said my name. So, I kind of just blow it off. The only big thing, really, is I was eating dinner with my family at the kitchen table, and from where my chair is, I can see straight ahead of me through a giant window that looks out to our backyard, and it's pretty big. I swear I saw a white man in a white t-shirt and blue jeans walk through our backyard, walk behind a tree, and then he was just gone. I went, who the hell was that? And everyone looked out the window, and my dad went, ah, hell, and ran and grabbed his gun while we kept watching the tree he went behind. When he went outside and looked, there was no one there. When he came back in, I asked him why he reacted like that, because he's a very chill person who never overreacts about stuff, and he responded with, I saw him too. He went behind the tree, right? I said yes, and he just looked spooked and didn't say anything else about it. Back when I was in college, probably 2012 to 2013, I experienced something weird with my friend. I went to a community college in New Jersey, and I had met a lot of friends. One night, two guys that I didn't know super well but seemed cool wanted to chill. I'll call them Rourke and Eric. I drove the three of us to Eric's house for video games, movies, and for Rourke and I to spend the night. We were having fun, but... Around 2 a.m., Eric's dad inexplicably said that Rourke and I couldn't spend the night. This was annoying because my place was at least a 45-minute drive away, and I would need to drive Rourke home first, wherever that was. This part of the state is very rural, with a bunch of thick forest roads and farmland, so everything is far apart there. 
so begrudgingly, Rourke and I got into my car, and since Eric guided us to his place, and neither Rourke or I knew where we were, I would need to GPS to his house. At the time, I still had a slider phone, not a smartphone, so I used one of those old TomTom Tom GPS units. We started on our way, following the GPS instructions through the wooded roads, making small talk and whatnot. Before long, we ended up on a wooded road that the GPS didn't have a name for. The space for the road name was just blank, which I had never seen before. Less than a minute after we got onto the road, the GPS lost signal. I didn't think much of it and just continued figuring that it would come back. The road started off normal and unremarkable, but it gradually got steeper and steeper downhill. Rourke and I both commented on it, but we brushed it off. However, as the minutes passed, the road got more and more simple. Eventually, there were no guardrails. Then it stopped having streetlights. Then it became a dirt road with no markings. Then it narrowed for just enough space for a car one way. The forest on either side was hugging us, and aside from the dirt road, there were no signs of human influence. It's also worth noting that there was never an intersecting road to turn onto. It was just a lone road, and we also never saw another car. Rourke and I were kind of nervously laughing about it, trying not to freak out. The decline had become very steep, and it was almost a perfectly straight road. I'd considered trying to turn around, but at that point, the road was too narrow to turn around. And it would have been awful for my car to drive back up something so steep for so long. So we just descended into the darkness, only able to see what my headlights showed. All in all, we probably went down for 15 to 20 minutes, and we were going decently fast. I doubt we ever went below 20 miles per hour, much faster a lot of the time so it wasn't killing my brake pads. I feel as though we should have easily passed sea level. Eventually, the road evened out, guardrails and streetlights came back, the GPS signal returned, and we just ended up on some side road like two minutes from Rourke's place. He insists that the road had never been there, and that there was no mountain near his place for us to have descended. I ended up just crashing at Rourke's place. The next day, I drove back the way I came, and... I could not find the strange road, nor could I find any road that was remarkably elevated. One day, I was doing some clothes shopping, and I got a call from my college friend, Jeffrey J. Mo Moore, to come over and hang out. I told Jeff that I would come over after I left the mall, and I was using public transportation. After I get to Jeff's house, Jeff introduced me to his friend, Sleepy. Sleepy appeared to be very... sleepy, and lethargic in the face. Sleepy and Jeff were in Jeff's room chatting about school. In Jeff's room, we hung out and talked for a while, but I had to go, so... I decided to leave after about an hour. I shook Jeff's and Sleepy's hands before exiting. As I exit Jeff's room and go out into the hallway, out of the front second floor door and down two flights of stairs, I'm at the front door. As I slowly open the house's front door, I notice that someone is blatantly blocking my exit. I look into the eyes of the person who could be so rudely and purposely blocking my exit, and it's Sleepy. Now, 
I just left Sleepy upstairs seconds ago, so it would have been impossible for him to be at the front door trying to get in. Though I was in terror because I've lived a long life of ghosts, haunted houses, and bad luck, my first complete thought was this is just Sleepy's twin brother coming to visit from home. Because I assumed with all of my heart that this was Sleepy's brother, I extended my hand and welcomed him in. I shook his hand, and it shook perfectly. He closed the door behind us. He followed me upstairs, into the second-story apartment, through the living room and dining room, and into Jeff's bedroom, where Jeff and his friend Sleepy were. Upon entering the room, I was so scared that I was trembling. I quickly sat down on the corner of the bed and gave J-Mo a cigarette under the doppelganger's nose. I kind of handed Jeff the cigarette at the same time that the doppelganger entered the room, and the look on Jeff's face was terrifying. He was in disbelief. I looked to give Sleepy a cigarette to read him as well, but he didn't want one. I then turned to Sleepy, as he also sat and said, Hey, Sleepy, do you have a twin brother? Sleepy shakes his head no and replies, Nah. As Sleepy stared the doppelganger in the face, he seemed to almost cower, but he kept eye contact. The doppelganger was breathing furiously and was super strong. As I stared back at Sleepy intently, I watched them through the mirror because I didn't want to catch any eye contact from said doppelganger. I remembered to take note that the doppelganger didn't have a reflection. After what seemed like an eternity, I slowly stood up and calmly walked out of the room behind the doppelganger and left the house. I have no clue how it all played out in the end. All three of our families experienced multiple deaths. Each time I saw Sleepy or Jeff in public, it would slip my mind to ask them how they got the doppelganger out of the house. I have a Swiss Army knife that I got for a birthday, and I always make it a point to keep it with me because you never know when you might need it. I always carry it in my bag, and I always carry my bag when going somewhere. At one time, my girlfriend and I were going to her hometown. We met up with some friends and went drinking outside. It was in a park in front of a theater, a place where people our age like to hang out usually. We brought some drinks with us, some beers, ciders, etc. A friend asked if anyone had a bottle opener, so I pulled out my Swiss Army knife and opened the bottle. I remember we all commented on how practical it is to have it, but that no one bothers to carry it. I've placed my knife on some steps, as I was expecting to open more bottles soon. It started raining heavily pretty quickly, and we took our stuff and took shelter. When the rain subsided, we decided to go home. When my girlfriend and I arrived, I noticed that I didn't pack the knife, and remembered that I'd left it on the steps. It was pretty late, and we decided that we would look for it tomorrow early morning. When we got back to the park the next day, the knife was gone. We searched around for it, but nothing. I had to accept that I'd lost the knife, and we started packing for our trip back home. While we were driving back at some point, I started saying how it's a shame that I had lost the knife. I held it very dear, and even though I could easily get another knife, I kind of got attached to this one. We were about to enter our house, and we made another couple of comments about the knife. We unpacked and all, and I was taking out some documents to put in my top drawer where I usually keep this stuff. As I opened the drawer, there it was. The red Swiss army knife was placed right in the middle of the drawer. I was shocked. 
and I quickly called out to my girlfriend. We couldn't believe it. It was my knife. After the amazement subsided, we started coming up with theories as to how it could have happened. One idea was that I had never even brought the knife, and that the beers were open some other way, but we knew that that wasn't true. Also, I never keep it in any drawer. Ultimately, we didn't come up with any good answers. I've come to accept the whole thing as very positive. Someone or something obviously cared enough about me to make sure that I got reunited with my knife. That's the story of the teleporting knife. I'm not looking for answers, but I would be curious to know what your experiences are with this. P.S. As I reread my story, I realized someone might suggest my girlfriend actually brought it with her and planted it in the drawer to surprise me. This isn't possible as I was the first to enter the house, and I went straight for the drawer. When I was about 17, I went on a day trip with my mom to a beach that we'd heard about. She knew how to get most of the way there, so she memorized the last few map quest directions instead of printing them out. It's almost entirely farmlands the whole way, so long, straight roads with very few intersections. We'd been driving through farmland for about 30 minutes, and the road we were on was supposed to intersect the town main's road at some point. But we kept driving, and didn't find any intersections for a while. Finally, we pulled into a gas station to ask how to get to the beach. The cashier pointed the way we came and said, Take this road, you'll drive straight into the lake. We hesitantly drove the way she told us, even though it was exactly the road we came from. And after a minute or two of driving straight, it was a completely different road. Instead of wide-open farms we'd seen the whole way here, there were now churches and houses and yard sales and banks and traffic lights. And sure enough, in less than ten minutes, the road ended at a T, looking straight over at Lake Ontario. It's kind of hard to miss. After taking a moment to be absolutely bewildered, we assumed that we had somehow merged onto the roads at an angle without realizing. Later at home, I looked it up on Google Maps. There are no slanted intersections between the beach and the gas station, only a handful of perfectly perpendicular intersections with either traffic lights or stop signs. Not only that, but a creek runs parallel to the main road, so, we would have had to have crossed the bridge to get to the main road. We did not cross a bridge. The creek is quite wide, so we should have noticed if we had crossed. I really wanted to chalk it up to some kind of illusion or unfamiliar territory, and we somehow turned right with neither of us realizing it, even though we were fairly on alert and checking every street sign for the main road, and our destination was to the left, so we had no reason to make any right turns. My mom still tells that story despite being a strong skeptic, and it's pretty tame, but still the most unexplainable thing that's ever happened to us. We've gone back many times since, and never found what possibly could have confused us. If anyone wants to check it out, on Google Maps, the town is Olcott on Lake Ontario in New York. The road is Route 78, and the gas station is Kenyon's. We were coming from the west, and the end destination plugged into MapQuest was the Olcott Beach Lighthouse. I 
had recently moved from the PNW back to my hometown in California earlier this year due to being honorably discharged. Before I moved down, I had lived with two other roommates, and we loved drinking together during the weekends. On the last weekend, I had bought a bottle of Junmai Saki from an Asian market. They bagged it up, folded the top of the bag, and stapled it, and placed it in a plastic bag along with other things I had bought from the store. I bought the sake because one roommate bought a sake set, and I thought we could put it to use as it would be our last time drinking together. We drank all the sake using the set, and the next night I started my drive to California. This all took place in May, so... I've been in Cali for a while now, and already have had several car washes, and I also installed new interior lighting in my car, which required me to get under the dash and seats. About three weeks ago, I took my car to get another wash because it got covered in tree sap. The car wash place I go to does a good job. They wash and hand dry, and they do some interior detailing. The guy that detailed my car calls me over because it's complete and ready. So, I tip him some bucks and I say thanks. I get in the car, and on the passenger seat is a paper bag with a tear on the top. I'm just thinking he forgot some cleaning supplies or something, so I peek out of the car, but he's already gone. I grab the bag and I inspect it, and I notice it's the same bottle of sake my roommates and I drank before I left. I'm completely baffled. The detailer must have found it, opened it to see what it was, and left it in my passenger seat for me. There's no way that I could have overlooked this out of all the times I've cleaned it, or when I installed my lighting or even the several times I brought it to the same place before. The bottle was unopened, like I never drank it. I haven't brought it up to my roommates, and I drank the bottle, again, with one of my oldest friends. I told him the story and we cracked jokes about it being the ghost sake, <laughs> saying that it might spawn in my car again. Even though we joked about it, I still think about it a lot, and it bothers me how this is possible. I know that I only bought one bottle of sake that night. So that was this week's Glitch in the Matrix collection, and hopefully you enjoyed it. I know I did, as I always seem to. I'm sure you guys did too. It seemed to do really well, so I have to assume you like what I'm creating, I guess. Uh, anyways, if you did like the video, please do hit that thumbs up button. If you're new to the channel, hit the subscribe button. If you're not new to the channel, well, welcome back. I do appreciate it, as always. And if you want to leave me some extra love, you can hit join or go to my Patreon. We're a dollar a month, get early access. You know the deal. I'm not gonna... I'm not gonna get into it all, as I always do. Yeah, anyway. One other thing you can do to leave... Nope. One other thing you can do to show me some love is leave me a comment. And in this comment, you should use this week's Word of the Week. Last week's Word of the Week was retro and is up on the screen right now. Everybody who submitted a word to me, thank you so very much to everyone. Really appreciate it. Keep up those retro vibes if you will. This week's Word of the Week, however, is imminent. I-M-M-I-N-E-N-T... It means about to incur, impending, threatening to occur immediately near at hand, or full of danger, threatening, menacing, perilous, etc., etc. As in, it is imminent that you will comment and leave me a word of the week comment in your comment. I don't know what I was trying to say there. You get the point. Anyways, I hope you all have a lovely day. I hope I see you on the next video. But until then, my friends, sleep well. Thank you.